I now call to order the regular session meeting of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs on Tuesday, September 1st, 2015 at 6.30. Roll call. Mayor Archie. Here. Vice Mayor Larson. Here. Commissioner Terrapenny. Here. Commissioner Banther. Here. Commissioner Sieber. Here. Uh, tonight's invocation will be given by Reverend Bob Russell of All Family of Faith Church. Would everyone stand? Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance, Father. Heavenly Father, we come together tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the opportunity to present the needs of the people of Tarpon Springs. We ask for guidance and wisdom for each member of the City Council and provide patience for those presenting their concerns and seeking answers. Father, we thank you for the privilege of living in a country that allows us to govern ourselves for the freedoms that we enjoy, protected by those who have served and given their lives through our armed forces. So much we take for granted. Tonight, again, I ask for a special blessing for the family of Harris County Sheriff Deputy Darren Goforth of Houston, Texas, who was senselessly gunned down. Father, we know how this family and community feels as we too lost one of our own almost a year ago. The pain that still hurts this town, we will never forget Charlie. And sadly, another peace officer was killed just this morning. Father, Lord Almighty, please comfort their family. Father, you tell us in Psalms 133.1 how good and pleasant it is when peoples, when God's people live together in unity. Our country seems more divided than ever, Father Almighty. Help us by guiding the love you create towards each other and stop this uncontrollable hatred. We ask for blessings for those in protection, for those who risk their lives so that we may enjoy ours, our police force, our fire department, our paramedics, and our medical team members. Father, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will now go to public comments on any item that will not be discussed this evening. Bear with me. I'm 90 years old and I'm home stretch fighting the finish line. And good evening to all of you on the Board of Commissioners. I came to Tarpon Springs as a snowflake in the 60s, a snowbird in the 70s, and as a resident in the mid-80s. Easily annoyed at the state of my newly adopted city, I reluctantly became an activist, appearing frequently before the boards of commissioners since 1986. I've experienced five mayors and five city managers up until now. In essence, I've been involved more than most of you and assumedly know more about the successful operation of a city government and on the negative side, the cunning machinations a blind constituency never become aware of until a disgruntled, courageous person comes forth and blows the whistle. I've been the official spokesman for the Woods Homeowners Association and the two neighboring subdivisions when we had Colin problems before the city and the county governments since 1987. You could say my relationship with both governments was normal, complimentary in the wake of successful solutions, and at times adversarial. For instance, I remember the prolonged process of getting rid of the large garbage dump at the dead end of Distant Avenue in the back end of the woods, back end gate of the woods in 1988. It took more than eight construction dumpsters to clean it up also, six months of requesting a street light for that area, and not until a murder was committed there to, did we get the light. And the lengthy back and forth over the proposed sports complex at the 69-acre landfill. And the attempt by the city to eliminate the water master meters in the various subdivisions and to impose single water meters for each unit at a high cost to each owner. The attempt by the city 
uh, I'm sorry, the three-year-long battle to get rid of approximately 20, 20, 120 foot by 30 foot by 12 foot high piles of septic garbage at the landfill that stenched a one to three mile radius, making it impossible for people to engage in outdoor activity. Fortunately, on a four to one vote, the city came forth and averted a very costly lawsuit. Now, before Mr. Punchin took over his department, I oftentimes observed the city projects being performed by two employees, well, as many as four or more that stood there watching them to do the work. What a waste of taxpayer money. More currently, I've attended many of the professional and amateur uh, uh, performances at our theater, and as few as 30 or 40 in attendance for those productions. Those productions cost thousands of dollars. What a waste of taxpayer money. And in view of the SpongeBob debacle, costing the taxpayers from $300,000, I think it is time for the city to investigate the performance of each department and its implications and finally consider re-engaging an internal auditor. I know that sounds bad, but I think you need it. I also reiterate my position on creating an independent committee to give voice to city employees the same as the unions do for the police and firemen. The city has lost many high-skilled professionals in the last five years. And is the city going to continue providing internships for other cities? And now comes the kicker. This is my last appearance, as I'll be moving to California within a week. And I'm leaving the city I love. And many of the people that I've dealt with over the years, had fun with, had disagreements with. But the sum total was we were people, and we lived a normal life, and it was great. The French philosopher, Jobert, had something to say like this. Without labor, capital dies. Likewise, without a high morale group of employees, a city will decay. How do I know? I went through two of them before I came here. I wish you all well and a great future. Thank you. Thank you. Before you leave there, Mr. LaRocca, we have a little something for you. You know, uh, we know every day hasn't been a good day for you or for us, but we know that you've always had Tarpa Springs best interest at heart. We could never pay you for all that you've done, the dollars that you've saved us. Uh, but we wanted to give you something so that you could remember us while you are on the beaches out in California. <laughs> And I always said it opens the hearts of all of the people of Tarpon Springs, you know. And you've done that uh, continuously with your hard work. You know? Thank you. If you give me a minute, one more minute. One more minute. <laughs> I'd like to thank Chief Cochin for all he has done for my community, and especially watching my property while I'm gone for months at a time. Uh, Paul Smith, who I've had to interrelate with, uh, certainly Tom Function, and I can't go on. I, for, after 30 years, it's hard to remember everybody and everything. And of course, Mark Rekulis, his dad and I were friends right on up until he passed. And uh, I think we're still friends, Mark. <laughs> and uh, despite my remarks, I'm here, hopefully, with some constructive comments. And I hope you don't take offense to them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Arch. Appreciate it. Dear Mayor, City Commissioners, and City Staff, several years ago, my name is Tim Kafalas, 205 Leafwood Road. Um, several years ago, I had the opportunity of meeting Joe LaRocca and realized just how much he cared about Tarpon Springs. He has served on many city-based committees and mentored many people, including me, and he was never afraid to state his concerns and beliefs on any city matters. 
It's unfortunate for Tarpon Springs that we are losing Joe to California, but after looking at the state of affairs in California, maybe just maybe he can help. Joe had quite a professional career, a wonderful family life, and a very supportive and encouraging wife. But when they decided to slow down, they moved to Tarpon Springs. Little did they know that he would be so called on by various city representatives and friends to help for so many years. He has been a friend, a mentor, and a leader. Recently, he came to my house for New Year's Day dinner, and although he knew no one in the room, he left with many new friends and something in common with people he had never, been, never met before. He has a wealth of knowledge, experience, and he always has been a tremendous asset to Tarpon. He never was trying to put a financial feather in his cap. He did not try to sell the city anything, nor, nor did he try to do anything illegal or unethical in his relationship with the city government. He is a friend of Tarpon Springs, and while you might not always agree with him, it is naturally understood that he cares about people and that they live productive lives. And it is easy to see that his love for Tarpon Springs is sincere. Everything he has done in Tarpon Springs is without any personal financial reward and done so with honor and pride. I hope that as he leaves Tarpon Springs, he's remembered for his tremendous attitude and the fact he is a gentleman and a wonderful friend to Tarpon. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Peter Delacus, 514 Ashland Avenue. Good evening, Mayor, Board, Squire Trask, Chief Cochin, City Manager, Mr. LeCourus, and Ms. Jacobs. The Reverend uh, touched a little bit on a point that I wanted to talk about tonight, but I want to go a little further. I don't know about you, but last week when I turned on CNN and found another senseless killing by someone who got a gun, I don't know if you uh, watched The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. But after the murder of nine people at the Evangelical Baptist Church in Savannah, he put it bluntly. We spend all this money and lives and effort to keep us safe from people abroad. Yet we neglect to protect us here. And how do we do it when people have access to guns that shouldn't be able to? It's a fine line. It's a very fine line. I, I, I just couldn't imagine the pain of Mr. Parker and the West family. You work so hard all your life to raise your kids. You see them on the threshold of them becoming something valuable in life. And they're snuffed away by some idiot. I don't know. I don't know where the answer leads, but I do feel it starts with us. We can't keep saying that the Second Amendment, which is the right to defend ourselves against foreign powers and other governments, as an excuse to allow fellow citizens to murder innocent people. Chief Cochin probably runs up against this quite a bit. And I just fear for those, because where are we safe now? Where is the next time somebody goes off on a rage and shoots your loved ones? I don't know the answer. And not everybody believes in God or love or compassion. But somehow we have to find a way to really keep weapons out of people's hands who are not responsible or mature or stable enough to not commit these types of acts. In God's name, I wish peace to all of them. And it's not the first time and it won't be the last. 
just recently the guy from the Colorado murder shootings got, what, 19 life prison terms. And Columbine and Sandy Hook and Savannah and Texas. Now in Illinois. And we had our own here. It's got to stop. Another public comment would go to proclamation. Um, item number one is September 11th, Remembrance Day. This reads proclamation, City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, whereas on September 11th, 2001, nearly 3,000 innocent men, women, and children lost their lives in a tragic act of terror, whereas amid danger and uncertainty, countless civilians and first responders risked their lives to search through the wreckage of the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and the field in Stony Creek Township, Pennsylvania. Whereas the Edward M. Kennedy Serve America Act approved by Congress and enacted into law on April 21st, 2009, designated September 11th to be observed as the annual National Day of Service and Remembrance. Whereas on this National Day of Service and Remembrance, the city of Tarpon Springs encourages residents to participate in service projects throughout the city, where the city of Tarpon Springs join people from across the country and around the world in remembering and honoring the victims and heroes of this day 14 years ago. Now, therefore, I, David R. Archie, by virtue of authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Tarpon Springs, and hereby recognize September 11, 2015, as 9 11 Remembrance Day in the city of Tarpon Springs. I call this observance to the attention of all of our residents. Item number two is a, another proclamation. It's Library Card Sign Up Month. <coughs> Excuse me. This reads, Proclamation City of Tarpon Springs, whereas the library card is the most important school supply of all, and whereas libraries play an important role in the education and development of children, and whereas the libraries bridge the learning gap by offering a wide range of digital and print resources, whereas libraries offer free access to technology and innovative educational programs, and whereas libraries continue to transform and expand their services in ways that meet the needs of the communities they serve. And whereas a free library card is the coolest card you can own. Now, therefore, I, David R. Archie, by virtue of authority, vested in me as the mayor of the city of Tarpon Springs, Florida, to hereby proclaim September 2015 Library Card Sign Up Month in the Tarpon Springs. I encourage everyone to sign up for the smartest card at your library. Mr. Rokevis. Mayor and Commissioners, thank you for this proclamation. I'd like to encourage everybody to come to the Tarpon Springs Library this month and sign up for a card. Not only do you have a chance to be entered to win prizes, but you can gain access to hundreds of thousands of materials in our countywide catalog, including the latest bestsellers, uh, DVDs, CDs, as well as eBooks, digital audiobooks, downloadable music, streaming video, and online databases on subjects like business research, uh, job assistance, homework help, auto repair, language learning, and I can go on and on. Um, also, I'd like to mention a couple program highlights we have for this month. September 15th, we have a business workshop by the Service Corps of, uh, Service Corps of Retired Executives. And on September 16th, we have a STEM workshop for children, STEM being science, technology, engineering, and math, and it's focusing on coding. And coming soon, we have our digital media lab equipment will be available um, to the uh, students at Tarpon Springs Middle School for their Preserving Our Past uh, project, as well as to the general public. So I encourage you all to come to the library this month and throughout the year. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next item is the presentation. It's item number three, uh, MPO and PPC uh, uh, unification. And we have uh, Whit Blanton. Uh, the new executive director here with us. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, 
Well, thank you, Mayor and, and Commissioners. I'd like to just say how pleased I am to be back here in the city of Tarpon Springs. It's been a few years, but uh, back in 2008, 9, and 10, I was your transportation planning consultant. Uh, and now I have an opportunity to live here in Pinellas County, and I'm extremely excited to be over here. Um, I worked uh, for the city of Tarpon Springs on the establishment of the city's multimodal transportation district, which was a key part of your redevelopment objectives for downtown and the sponge docks and much of the other uh, area of the core part of the city. That was the first time that we got the Florida Department of Transportation to agree to allow local governments to uh, look at transportation from a different lens as a way of supporting economic activity as a, instead of looking at a way of just getting cars through a city. And um, I think that was a real landmark decision and a number of other communities, not only here in Pinellas County, but throughout this Tampa Bay region, have followed your, your lead on that effort. And I think that was a, it was an important groundbreaking project. But I no longer wear a consultant hat. I'm now here full time as the new executive director of the Pinellas Planning Council and Pinellas Metropolitan Planning Organization. And that org that, those were two separate agencies. Uh, the PPC was responsible for countywide land use uh, plans, and so we would review a city's uh, proposed future land use amendment or a future change, make sure it was consistent with countywide plan. And the MPO has been around for many years, and its responsibility is to direct federal and state transportation dollars uh, to Pinellas County in a way that makes sense and that fits a, a strategic vision. Having those two organizations aligned uh, is a first for the state of Florida. There's not a single agency anywhere in Florida that has a land use and transportation linkage like we have here in Pinellas County. I'm now eight weeks on the job and I'm working hard to align our resources, align our staff, um, and articulate um, a clear vision for how we're going to move forward as an agency. To that end, we have a workshop with our 13-member governing board on September 21st. Uh, we have a regular uh, board meeting on September 9th, but September 21st is a special meeting. It's going to be from 8.30 to 12.30 at the Epicenter at St. Pete College uh, off Olmerton Road, 58th Street. And the reason I bring that to your attention is because um, our board members, and I think here in Pinellas County, we've really been needing to focus on a strategic plan for how we integrate land use and transportation countywide, how we elevate key transportation and land use decisions so that we're looking out for the long-term benefit of Pinellas County. And one of the things that we're going to ask our board members to evaluate is to take a fresh look at the US-19 corridor. And the reason for that is we have spent the better part of 25 years in this county building the interchanges, the overpasses, uh, along at, at Gulf to Bay and Drew Street and working our way up. The next one in line is at Curlew Road. Our long-range plan has a, has a plan in place to continue building those interchanges all the way up to Pasco County line, including Tarpon Avenue. And um, that's a billion dollars of investment that if that's not the direction we really want to go as an agency, we, really, we have a better way to spend some of that money. And um, I wanted to get your opinion on that and see if I could get any feedback because we're, we're going to have that conversation. And while many of the, those projects are a long way away, the reason we're looking at the US-19 quarter is really what has been the effect of those interchanges along the development and land use patterns along that corridor over the years. Clearwater is changing its land development plan to enable more economic development in the area of the US-19 quarter, but it's been a real struggle. Um, building the highway overpasses has really undermined the economic vitality and viability of a lot of those businesses. And I've heard some concerns from folks that that's a shared concern coming up uh, into the Palm Harbor, unincorporated county, and then up into Tarpon Springs. So I just raised that issue. The vision may still call for long-term, those interchanges need to be built. Uh, Tarpon Avenue and uh, Tampa Road are very high crash locations. We have a lot of traffic crashes involving not just cars, but pedestrians and bicyclists at those two intersections. So something clearly needs to be done, but those are very expensive kinds of fixes. And if we can use those dollars in other, in other ways, in other parts of the county, then we should consider it. Um, we're also asking the board to look at other issues like enhancing beach access throughout the county, protecting vulnerable users, bicyclists and pedestrians to make their travel safer and more effective. Uh, and looking at the gateway area, which is the economic engine of Pinellas County in a lot of respects, 
but is a very disjointed, disaggregated, and disconnected uh, set of land uses. So I just wanted to really introduce myself to you all and let you know that I'm here. I hope this isn't my last time here. I know it won't be. Hopefully next time I come here, I'll be able to work with you on a partnership project where we can maybe match some of the federal transportation dollars we get with some projects that you're looking to accomplish. Because that's really our role now, is not to be the, uh, the oversight agency and the regulatory agency checking out what you're doing, but really to be a partner to bring dollars to the table um, and to leverage our resources so that collectively we can achieve more. Um, so I don't have much of a presentation today. I really just wanted to put a name to a face and um, say that I'm really glad to be back here in Tarpon Springs and look forward to the next opportunity to, to chat with you all on a specific project. And if you have any questions for me today, I'd be happy to try and entertain them now. And if you have any guidance or suggestions for your view of the 19 corridor, that would be welcome as well. Well, first, I just want to thank you for coming up uh, to Tarpon and letting us put a uh, face with a name. And as I told you seven years ago, I, I can't remember that. <laughs> seven days is hard for me. But uh, right. we look forward to working uh, with you. I've had a chance to be on the MPO, PPC, and doing the uh, unification process. And it was a long process. And hopefully, we'll be able to do some great things. I, guarantee you when you start talking about overpasses in Tarpon and Tarpon Avenue, you'll get a lot of input yep. as it relates to that. So we're looking forward we to look that. forward to working with you. Some great projects. Hopefully we can do some other things that you kind of started here in the city of Tarpon, seeing those things to its completion. So thank you. Absolutely. Any question for Mr. Blunt? Thank you. We look forward to uh, seeing you again soon. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity to be on your agenda tonight. Thank you. Any uh, public comments on this item? If not, then we'll uh, go to uh, item number two, our uh, uh, facility update. That's moved to the next uh, meeting. Oh, okay. Then. Thank you, sir. Uh, any uh, item anybody would like to pull on the consent agenda? If not, shall we entertain a motion? Move approval. Second. Any public comment on the consent agenda? Roll call. Commissioner Seaver? <coughs> yes. Commissioner Banther? Yes. Commissioner Terrapenny? Yes. Vice Mayor Larson? Yes. Mayor Archie? Yes. Uh, special consent item number 10, health care insurance plan for fiscal year 2016. Honorable Mayor, Board of Commissioners, Jane Niffen, HR Director. I'm here tonight to recommend that the Mayor and Board of Commissioners approve the Health Insurance Plan, Plan 15, provided by the Florida Municipal Insurance Trust, uh, administered by the Florida League of Cities, effective October 1st, 2015 through September 30th of 2016. Um, I don't want to belabor the, what's in your backup, but I do think it's worth making a few observations um, put it, putting it bluntly, we've had a bad year with regard to claims experience. And in the insurance business, uh, there's an old saying, the claims are the claims are the claims and somebody has to pay them. So as a result, for every dollar in premium that the league took in or the plan took in, uh, they paid out 95 cents uh, in straight claims. That's not including any overhead. Um, in the open market, that would probably bring us a much larger increase than we're experiencing uh, to this year. Um, I've been observing and in contact with colleagues uh, in other municipalities, and it appears uh, over the years that there's a direct connection between your, that ratio that we talked about and the renewal rate. Uh, again, it goes back to paying, paying claims. I need to point out that um, having looked at a lot of the plans in, in our uh, region, particularly the uh, Pinellas County. Um, our plan is a particularly uh, competitive one. It's a very good plan. Um, we have, for example, uh, we have four tiers of coverage versus three, which means that employees have more choices. Um, you, if you um, have an employee plus one, 
then you're limited to an employee plus a spouse or an employee plus uh, a child. Otherwise, you've got to go straight to family coverage. We offer those two separate tiers. There are some plans, a couple of plans, that offer employee plus, uh, plus two, which means that um, you can have two people besides yourself on the plan, but then you have to, anything more, and you have to go to the family rate. Um, some of them don't allow, and it's, it's to limit the cost uh, for the children. Um, we also have um, a lower uh, calendar year deductible, uh, which is 250 and $500. Um, they range anywhere from what we have to um, $3,000 and $6,000 for family. And that's not counting the high deductible health plans. I've seen them as high as um, 5 and 10 in network and 15000 and 30000 out of network. Um, we also have a lower out of pocket maximum than, than some of the plans. Um, obviously, when you have a high deductible plan, um, or a, one that's going to have a high out-of-pocket max, the cost to the employee, it does shift. Um, we have been able to, to hold the line on that. Um, I've noticed that we have, we went a few years ago to, from a straight HMO to what is almost known as a PPO um, or POS because we do have out-of-network um, coverage, but it's at, <coughs> excuse me, a lower percentage contribution by <coughs> the plan. For in-network, it's 90-10. In other words, the, the uh, plan pays 90% uh, and the employee pays 10. Um, other plans I've seen, and quite a few of them, are 80-20. Um, some of them are even 70-30. And I've seen as high as 50-50. Um, <clears throat> so without uh, mentioning uh, any more details, you're probably bored with them as, as, as I move along. Um, we do still pay 100% of the employee uh, play, uh, cost, premium costs, whereas a lot of other plans are now asking their employees to make a direct contribution. Uh, we do still maintain a subsidy on the, uh, on the dependents, and because of the increase this year, um, we're asking that the city consider splitting the, the increased cost on a 50-50 basis. That's all I have to say. Yes, thank you, and, and, and I appreciate all, all, all the work you do that goes into this this this, this uh, plan each year, and they help you provide employees year-round um, in regards to, to the to, to the, the, the 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 health insurance. Uh, did did we go out to bid this year, or is it only every so many years we do that for our, for our insurance? No, we are members of a consortium, mm -hmm. and under Florida state law. Um, there's not a requirement for the bid process because of the fact that it's a, it's a pooled, um, it meets the pooling requirements. Um, in, it's been my experience over the last 15 and a half years that um, you, you, you can go out to bid, which is benchmarking is always a good thing, um, but there are companies out there that will buy the business, um, and then you find in the subsequent years you end up um, paying for that the uh, the claims because again whatever your claims are somebody's got to pay them um, so the, basically we're, it's operated on the premise uh, that a consortium of 75 to 100 um, entities can get a better deal than a single entity of our size I understand that and and, and, and I can appreciate that and I, I've often said when we, if we do go out to bid we we I guess we have in the past when we have found out that this is the the, the better plan for us but with it going up 10%, I would just think it's encouraging. I think you, you, you use the, the right term as just benchmarking, not saying we're going to go out to bid to definitely switch, but to just compare it. And I realize sometimes with, with different ki kinds of plans that they'll offer you a, 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 a like low, lower rate to get in, but we're already jumping 10% this year. So, I mean, I just, you know, can't I can't really imagine that if we – there would be much harm in us just shopping it around. Not so much for this year, it, 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 it's already done, but for next year, and I just think each year would be good ju ju just, to have it, ju just to have it benchmarked. I, 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 because the Florida League um, is, a, is, is still a vendor, and they can get maybe comfortable if they know that people aren't shopping it around. So I think that them, them might be helpful to do it, and it could be that each year we find out that this plan's the best. But I think when we're talking about something this large in our budget, Something that, that that that's going up 10% um, 
though in our budget, it would be wise to at least go out to bid, as you said, just 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 to benchmark and see. And I realize it's not just dollar for dollar. You're talking plan, plan uh, benefits. We have the health care clinic, things like that. All that goes into consideration. But I think it would be a, a good exercise each year just to go out for it, like, like you said, just to compare ourselves and and, and, just, and just see what, what 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 else is out there. Uh, but thank you. I know this this is not easy work uh, to, to 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 do. So thank you. Thank you. Um, following up with Commissioner uh, Banther and Ms. Smith, and I appreciate the presentation and everything you do for the city in terms of human resources. Um, a number of years ago, we entered into the agreement with CARE ATC and the freestanding facility, and a big part of that presentation was that the thought that <clears throat> by giving the employees or our employees the opportunity to go see a doctor quicker or at a better convenience to them, et cetera, would potentially lower our insurance premiums. Um, and also the, uh, the claims because we'd be able to give them better care, et cetera. So my question becomes, is there any data that has been produced from uh, CARE ATC or our agreement with them that would show us whether or not that has been realized? It's my understanding that there will, at a later date, be a presentation on the clinic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll impact. almost be at our two-year mark, and I've got to look at that right. date, but the end of October, beginning of November, I, I got to look when we did that, but when they have those figures already mm -hmm. been asked, to have us there'll be a separate item in about a month which will deal with that and it'll have the two-year <laughs> record so we can see the the two-year record that as we enter into this last year which starts out is the the last year mm -hmm. um we'll have those two years and that's probably going to come to you in a month on a meeting that would be interesting to me thank you <coughs> questions any uh, public comments on this item shall we entertain a motion move for approval second Mr. Sieber? Yes. Mr. Banther? Yes. Mr. Terrapin? Yes. Vice Mayor Larson? Yes. Mayor Archie? Yes. Uh, next item is uh, item number 11 property and casualty uh, and workers' comp insurance. Listen again. Again. Um, I'm here to recommend that the Board of Commissioners approve uh, the renewal of the city's property and casualty and work comp insurance with the Florida Municipal Insurance Trust. Uh, for a one-year period commencing October 1st of 2015. Um, when I first came to the city oh, 15 and a half years ago, um, I noticed that our premiums for our risk management were in excess of a million dollars. Um, as you can see from your backup, that, that, that figure has uh, declined significantly. Um, we have, uh, I guess, had some, some good years. Um, if you look over the, over the last eight years, I believe um, we have the premium has been reduced by $891,000. Um, the league in fiscal year 2008-2009 um, started returning premium for uh, property insurance that hadn't been used. Um, we, to date, we have collected, uh, or are going to, if we count the $29,560 uh, that we get this year, um, $391,000 um, in, 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 in literally cash, well, check. Uh, but at any rate, we've experienced a little blip this year in work comp. Um, the property and casualty, in spite of all our trip and falls, has, uh, has gone down. Um, but the work comp has, has inched up a bit, which indicates that even though we have a safety program, we probably should keep a, a good eye on, on our safety measures and keep our, safety, our training program in place. So I'm recommending that we approve that, you approve that for this year. Thank you. Uh, just so, uh, I guess my own clarification. Uh, after premium uh, is returned, it's actually going to be lower than it was last year, even with the uh, increase. Uh, um, yes, last year we received thirty-five thousand three hundred three. This year we're in line um, for twenty-nine five sixty. It's based on the on the on the coverages that, and then there's, it's uh, done on a per capita. Um, if you're if your premium is so much, you participate. I believe they return, they're intending to return almost 60 million, is it 60 million? Or six million, sorry, not 60, six, $6 million in, in premium for, to their members this year. I was really just talking about the, the bottom line, the total of the premium was 801, 630, and this year it seemed like it's 796. 
is actually less than it was last year, if I'm looking at that right, for the renewal after the return of the premium. Actually, the, what I on the second page, your your total premium for last year was eight hundred one six thirty, and this right. year it's eight twenty five. And with the return of the premium, it'll be seven ninety six. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Uh, any questions? Any public comments? Chair will entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Siever. Yes. Commissioner Banther. Yes. Commissioner Terrapani. Yes. Vice Mayor Larson. Yes. Mayor Archie. <clears throat> yes. Thank you. Uh, we go to item number 12, award bid number 150128-B-JJ Equipment Replacement Performing Arts Center in the Surrey Bid. This issue is, uh, of course, our grant on the auditorium. As you know, we rejected the first bid and went out. Um, we were able to, um, again, we came in overbid, but um, through the help of the Kathy Monahan Foundation, um, who's going to make up some of the differences of it, um, we're presenting this package for the auditorium. Um, we are picking up as a city the extra 20000 for the sound um, addition. That's a sound addition that's going to help these commission meetings and the sound. So um, we have the money uh, in the in nursing home money left over to use for that portion. The foundation is going to take the uh, other two alternatives you say there. And, uh, and again, the, the money over the 500000 from the grant. Um, we also have, with the Beverly and the nursing home deals, money put away for city buildings um, that we'll use to, to make up that difference. So there will be no you know, additional general fund monies from it. It will be the monies we have put aside for buildings um, to get this auditorium done. Again, we had hoped the second bid we would come closer to the 500000 grant, but remember that first 500000 is grant money. So in essence, um, and then subtracting what the what the Kathy Monahan Foundation is going to put in, that number that's left is the only number that uh, we will be picking up. And again, that'll come from building money we had set aside from the uh, nursing homes. Any uh, Commissioner Tarpan? Thank you, uh, Mark. I'm trying to wrap my head around um, this base bid and then the alternatives. Uh, first of all, my understanding is that that up to five or five hundred thousand has come from. Uh, uh, historic preservation grant yes okay so then the balance of that I guess it would be an additional 113,600 that's coming from a portion of city funds from the sale of the nursing home as well as the Kathy Monahan Foundation yes from for the ad adult one and adult two is coming from the foundation three which is the sound system to help mm -hmm. enhance the commission mm -hmm. is coming from us and the overage from the 500,000 um, that overage um, as you see the 540 um, that overage is coming from that building fund for money from the nursing home. The 540. That was the base bid? Yes, base bid. Okay. That was when we bid again to try to get closer to that 500,000 uh -huh. level of the grant. Right. But obviously the project and the dimensions and the scope of this building and, you know, trying to convert this old building like we wanted to, you know, we were resigned after the second bid that uh, that was the best we were going to get. And, you know, we need to supplement money to the grant. But again, it's only the 40000 there, mm -hmm. the 20000 from the sound system, the foundation's picking up 52 and change, 53 and change. Mm -hmm. And that'll get us the whole whole project, and base project with the, the top three alternatives that we needed. On okay, it. so the alternative four and five is out of the picture? Yes. Okay. Um, all right, thank you. Any additional questions? Any public comments? Shall we entertain a motion? Move for approval. Second. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Commissioner Banther? Yes. Commissioner Terrapani? Yes. Vice Mayor Larson? Yes. Mayor Archie? Yes. Uh, the next is audits and resolutions. Uh, item 13 is legislative. Item 14 is quasi-judicial. Uh, these items would be discussed together but voted on separately. Uh, Item 13 is ordinance 2015-17 application number 15-47 amend future land designation from RM uh, to CL 
top internal first read. Hey, Mayor. You want me to read this? No, I'll go ahead and, and take it from here. Okay. Mayor, I'm going to go ahead and read Ordinance 2015-17 uh, first, and then I'm going to read a quasi-judicial statement, and then I'll be swearing in any witnesses that are going to testify as to the zoning matter. Ordinance 2015-17, an ordinance of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, amending the future land use map for approximately 0.827 acres. That's 36,031 square feet of property located on the south side of Lake Tarpon Avenue adjacent to 1513 Lake Tarpon Avenue from RM Residential Medium to CL Commercial Limited providing for findings and providing for an effective date. I'll read also the quasi-judicial statement for those that are going to testify today. This application to amend zoning is a quasi-judicial proceeding by law it is the Commission's function at this hearing to make findings of fact based upon evidence presented at the hearing and apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria contained in the Code of Ordinances in order to make a legal decision regarding the application before it. The Commission may only consider evidence that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues arising from the application, applicable code sections rather. If that evidence demonstrates that the application has met the criteria established in the Code of Ordinances, the Commission is required by law to find in favor of the applicant. By the same token, if the evidence demonstrates the applicant has failed to meet the criteria established in the Code of Ordinances, the Commission is required by law to find against the applicant. There is an established procedure which be followed in, in, in this quasi-judicial hearing, and it is, fall, is as follows. All witnesses must give their testimony under oath. All persons testifying at the hearing must give their name and address for the record. All testimony and questioning at the hearing must address matters that are relevant and material to the issues under consideration. The city staff will present its testimony and evidence first. The applicant will have the opportunity to cross-examine the city staff and city witnesses. The applicant will then present its witnesses and evidence. City staff will have the opportunity to cross-examine the applicant's witnesses. Absent unusual circumstances to be determined by the Commission, the party's opening statement and presentation is limited to 10 minutes. At that point, the Commission will proceed to the public comment portion of the meeting. Members of the public opposing the application will be given an opportunity to present testimony. After all members of the public opposing the application have concluded, members of the public in support of the application will have the same opportunity. Each member of the public was limited to four minutes of testimony. A member of an organization who testifies as part of the organization or group's presentation forfeits his right to speak during the public portion of the meeting. During the public comment portion of the meeting, members of the public present at the hearing may donate their time to a speaker to extend the speaker's time, but in doing so, the person donating the time forfeits his or her right to speak. Each donation will extend the speaker's time an additional two minutes. In no event shall the speaker's time be extended beyond 10 minutes of the total speaking time. Following public comment, the applicant and city staff will have the opportunity to present any necessary rebuttal evidence to make a closing argument or summary. The applicant will go first, followed by city staff. Absent unusual circumstances to be determined by the commission, the party's closing summary and rebuttal evidence will be limited to 10 minutes each. After that, the board, excuse me, the commission will consider the matter. After hearing that, anyone that's going to speak tonight on this matter, if you want to stand up, raise your right hand, I'm going to swear you under oath. You swear that the testimony you're going to give this evening will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Okay, thank you. Please be seated. Now staff would make a presentation. Good evening, Heather Erler um, for the Planning and Zoning Division. This, al this application is being requested by the Tarpon Turtle LLC. Um, again, the basics for the, the project are for a number of lots that they've acquired that total um, a total square footage of 36,031 square feet or 0.8.27 acres along Lake Tarpon um, Avenue adjacent to the existing Tarpon Turtle restaurant. Um, the applicant is requesting to change the future land use and the zoning designation um, to recently acquired lots from um, residential 
multifamily and RM, which is residential medium in the land development code two, CL and WDI, um, CL being um, commercial limited and WDI to um, being um, waterfront development district. The applicant stated purpose for the change is to allow for development of a supplemental and or overflow parking lot. Staff's evaluation on this is based on the highest and best use allowed in the proposed land use and the zoning designation, as well as consistency and compatibility with the comprehensive plan and the land development code and the surrounding area. The subject properties are located in close proximity to existing residential um, uses. Currently, um, there's a situation that exists with um, employees and staff of the Tarpon Turtle parking along the street um, to allow for patrons to use their existing parking lot. Um, while the road is of sufficient width to allow for the temporary on-site parking, the only way to allow for sufficient parking for both staff and patrons is to allow for development of additional parking. It's the only way to correct an existing condition that's out there. Um, basically, the properties in question are not all contiguous. There is a um, 50 by 130 um, foot parcel that separates the tarpon turtle site from the vacant lots to the west. Um, that particular out parcel is owned by the adjacent Tarpon Sale and Tennis Club. It's not part of this application. It will remain RM-15 and RM on the future land use map. Uh, this poses a challenge to development of these parcels into a cohesive parking lot because there's this out parcel in between the two sections of the parking or the two sections of the site. Without a site plan being submitted, it's impossible to restrict the use of this to parking lots. So I, I want to be clear in this that this land use change means that any of the potential uses in the waterfront development district and the uses allowed that are consistent with the uh, um, future land use category of commercial limited are allowed. And what I'm going to do now is just read into the record those particular uses that are allowed um, within that district so everyone's aware of what is allowed. The permitted uses in the WD, uh, the WD Waterfront Development District are commercial off-street parking lots, eating establishments, which includes sit-down restaurants and taverns, emergency services, hotels, convention centers, and or conference facilities require, will require conditional use uh, review. Outdoor cafe of restaurant seating not, not along the public right-of-way. Outdoor markets also not on the public right-of-way. Residential over ground floor commercial, retail establishments, retail um, sales establishments, wet slip marinas. Now the following uses are allowed by conditional use, so they would come in for a secondary application um, to allow for these type of uses. Those include assembly hall, convention centers, um, business and professional office, boat yards, uh, community assembly, commercial recreation facilities, community service uses, financial institutions, library museums, galleries, cultural centers, and similar uses, lodging facilities, offshore tourist vessels, personal service establishments, single family dwelling, uni um, dwelling units, um, tourist homes, and shopping centers. So those are the total types of uses that are allowed within this zoning district. Um, you, we have to evaluate based on um, the potential for that lot, to, those lots to develop on the land use side, we can't restrict to parking because we don't have a vehicle with this type of application to do that restriction. There is no restrictive covenant as part of this um, proposal. What is being proposed here is what's called a straight land use change and a straight change to the future land use. With that, the Technical Review Committee reviewed this application on June 25th, 2015 and had no objections to the request. The planning board um, likewise reviewed this application on July 20th um, and the planning board discussed the history of the tarpon turtle along with the issues including safety, the impact of on-street parking, noise, potential impacts to adjacent um, neighbors um, and the planning board then voted four to one to recommend approval of this project and staff is recommending approval of the project. Since um, the last hearing on this which essentially due to a staff error we basically had to start from scratch. Um, there has been a lot of backup that's been provided to you. A lot of um, stuff has come in from the general public. We've also had some information provided by the applicant, including the new deeds that show the tarpon turtle as the, as the owner, as the property appraiser's website also shows, and also a new application that indicate that the applicant is in, fa in fact the tarpon turtle. They are the owner and the applicant on this um, particular project. And with that, I can answer any additional questions you may have.
Ms. Phillips, I went Vice Phillips. Thank you. Um, th the last time this was discussed, th there was talk about a restrictive covenant as a possible mechanism to restrict the property to being utilized only for parking. And, and I now understand that that is not an option, or at least it's not an option this evening. Mm -hmm. I, I wonder if our city attorney could chime in on exactly what the options would be for the applicant. Um, and, and is there an avenue where a restrictive covenant limiting the, the use to parking uh, could be utilized? It can't be utilized in the zoning application process. It cannot at all. As for a restrictive covenant, at some time in the future when the site plan comes back for approval, for consideration, you can place conditions upon it at that time, depending upon the actual use um, and uh, the location where um, the activity is going to occur. Um, you can also limit um, access, you can limit light, you can limit sound, a lot of different things that you can include in that restrictive covenant if you wanted to go to that distance, but it's not until the site plan approval process for the actual um, development of the parcel can you do that so in the meantime uh, theoretically if tonight's agenda item were to be approved of uh, that that would be allowing for the primary uses including office personal services retail commercial business services and temporary lodging whatever the permitted uses are yes as for conditional uses it would require one more review and one more application to come back to the city I, I may have additional questions, but that's that's it for now. Thank you. Just a, as a follow-up on that, I, I get these to all uh, Commissioner Siebel. Uh, can the applicant voluntarily enter into that restrictive covenant? Yes. So but the city cannot be, require well, we it. We can't require it, but they could step forward and do it. Absolutely. Because, uh, Mr. Siebel, then I suppose we are. Uh, okay. Yeah, basically, I'm having the same questions. Um, if we do vote yes on this before anything else can be built on this property or other than parking lots it would have to come back and to the board even if it had a parking lot provide to be developed on the property it would have to come back to the city I'm not sure the review process and, and the review process is in order for you to develop any of those permitted uses they would still have to come back before this body and the planning board to re get reviewed under the site plan requirements for that development because it's vacant property there's never been any use established on that property um, that being said at that time we could impose conditions and I think that's what we were we were talking about here you can put conditions on that on that particular approval based on what's actually being proposed at that time so in the future we can put conditions on on that property correct okay. and there's no way that their capacity can be, can increase because it, it's limited to the 167 or 170 whatever that capacity is correct right now the turtle is governed by the conditional use on the actual turtle itself to that the what the capacity is allowed at this particular time any additional request would again have to come back to the conditional use process and be reapproved by this body um, for final approval. Thank you. Okay. Which, uh, uh, Tarpin? Thank you. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Attorney, just to follow up on what the mayor uh, alluded to, if the applicant was to enter into a uh, restrictive covenant voluntarily, but we can't, uh, we can't, how do we enforce that is basically what I'm trying to figure out. If the applicant was willing to do that, uh -huh. it would be a recorded restrictive covenant. Uh -huh. The restrictive covenant would be one that would be approved by the city attorney's office that would have enforcement mechanisms in it. And those enforcement mechanisms could be things such as coming back before the code enforcement board, coming back here before the commission, or in a worst case scenario, going to circuit court for enforcement if they fail to comply with the terms of that restrictive covenant. And the zoning doesn't have to be changed for them to voluntarily enter into that? No. Okay. Assuming you do change, assuming we do vote yes, at that point, the permitted uses are permitted by right? Once you approve the zoning um, tonight, if you approve it, it is permitted by right. Right. So even though you can review the site plan and say, we'd like you to do this or we'd like you to do that, with a zoning change, the use is permitted by right. They still have to go through the site plan Understood. approval process, mm -hmm. but the use is whatever is provided for in that list. Correct. Thank you. Uh, I just have some of the same concerns that have been mentioned here tonight. Um, I know we can't enforce um, 
the these covenants um, it would be nice especially considering the two parcels that um, are separate well I guess it's one parcel but the the larger portion of land that is separated from that piece of land that's owned by the condo association but uh, though though behind it, I think if we were just at least in my view dealing with just the one piece of land ne next next to the parking lot uh, in my view it could be easier to digest this but um, when looking at that larger piece of land there and the potential for that under the new zoning if it's approved tonight um, I do have s s some reservations on that and uh, and would have liked to see uh, the applicant come forth if, if, if that's what they want to do with it is the parking lot offer those voluntary covenants so um, I'm not quite sure myself where to go from here but I kind of echo the, 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 the same questions and concerns uh, as, as my colleagues thank you uh, I just had one other question and we may not be able to answer this but we received some additional uh, materials and um, one of these uh, uh, quotes that there were 30 complaints in the last six months and do you know what that's about or uh, I, I can't a answer that specifically because but I think chief might be able to shed some light there there were 24 complaints in the last year okay so we just got information saying 30 in the last have, six have months so that was, okay. so we ran All right. thank you okay this is the opportunity for the applicant to cross examine now is the applicant here Mr. Pressman, do you have any questions of the city staff? And if you could introduce yourself, please. Todd Pressman, 334 East Lake Road, uh, number 102 in Palm Harbor, Florida. I don't have any questions for staff, sir. Okay. It would be now the applicant's opportunity to make a presentation. Uh, Mr. Mayor um, and the whole board here, uh, we hear very clearly what the concerns of the, uh, of the city are. Uh, so we would like to move forward uh, or we would like to move forward with a restricted covenant uh, we want to work with the city we want to work with any neighbors who might have concerns um, I'm just a little bit confused on process I talked to Heather earlier um, and then I heard a lot of discussion here so really I would divert our discussion tonight on how we can move as quickly forward with a restricted covenant to keep the use as parking um, Mr. Hunt is here uh, and his team our whole team is here and uh, that's clearly again where we want to work with the city and work with any neighbors that might have concerns so uh, I wasn't exactly sure how that process works as I talked to Heather earlier I was under the impression we'd file an application and this would come back to this board uh, 30 45 days whatever the same issues along with a restricted covenant um, I would like to make one additional comment uh, with respect to the police chief I did visit your office on uh, yesterday I asked for a printout of all the complaints that there may be for the site I was given 15 separate printouts I want the so we have a little bit of a difference of number there your staff gave that to me uh, I do want the mayor commission to know that most of those complaints are non complaints I have them here I can read some to you a lot of them are uh, noise complaint and it was a leaf blower with a muffler uh, a stuck motorist um, there's never been any citations or any citations by the police or by your code enforcement since the new team's taken over so I'll get with the police chief so we can get that uh, that record complete but again I did visit your offices and was given those 15 complaints since the team took over and again the great majority of them are not complaints and uh, were issues that were just not issues well I, I can clarify that real quick these are county incidents that I'm talking about there was 24 from 9 16 2014 to 8 28 2015 and when we say complaints not all of them are complaints yep. some may be directed patrols some may be noise nuisances we had five noise nuisances over that time so you have to break down all this data but I was speaking from exactly what we print out from our CAD yes sir so that's for the record that's clear what I said now you can go into each individual call and some may be directed patrols some may be a disturbance some may be noise nuisance we could break it down that way but I was just I was just answering the Commissioner's question about sure. the number of cabinets that we've had sure and uh, I'll get together with you and I just want to make sure we all have that we're all looking at the information not that either of us is wrong but I just I heard the comment I want to assure the mayor and commissioners 
um, and I'll go through those in a later date rather than tonight, that again, a great majority of whatever the calls are now calls, a few of them came for the restaurant. Um, a woman lost a ring, she came back, she couldn't find it, um, uh, those sort of things, just very non-issues, thank you. And just to clarify for the restrictive covenant, there is an application process that the city attorney would be part of that agreement. They would review everything that came in. So essentially there is an application process that they would, pro they would process for that restrictive covenant. We can certainly, um, we can certainly continue this, this hearing to a date certain time where the advertising can be preserved since the, the public is here and is noticed um, that 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 hearing would happen if that's the discretion, that's up to the discretion of the board on how you want to continue with that, um, that particular thing. But essentially it's an application process. It does take some time to process, but it basically comes to this board with the city attorney's approval, obviously, of w the content of the agreement. So w we're looking at um, deferring this till a date certain or de uh, now in terms of trying to determine what that date would be. It would need to be done that way, Mayor, so that okay. we can save the city the cost of having to re-advertise. Okay. So if anybody is here tonight, they'll know the date and okay. time. So how much time are you looking at in terms of... Potentially the requirements of the application is I have to mail notices to, to affected property owners within 15 days of when the application um, is going to go to hearing. Um, at this point, there's no reason why we can't sequence all three of the first reading of the two ordinances and that restrictive covenant to be heard the same night, and you can easily make the, either the October 6th or the October 20th um, date. I'll leave that up to the applicant to kind of negotiate which works best for them. We'll process it in the planning department through that process, and we can meet those deadlines. Um, I, I would just suggest rather than doing a date certain, which gets to be problematic, um, We'll file the application next day or two. With Heather's great to work with, and uh, when we get a better idea of timing, we just pick a public hearing date to come back to. But well, then we have the expense again of having oh. to, pub to publish. It okay. And we're trying well, to. I, I missed that. I'm sorry. So, why don't um, we say that uh, looking at the October 20th date or the October 6th, either one, and if there's something happens, then we can uh, easily, I guess, from that defer that until. Uh, what, October 20th, what was the other date, sir? The 6th. Six. October 6th? Six. Well, if you did the first meeting in November. October 20th is tough. That's tough for me. November 6th. November 6th? Mayor, can I ask a quick question? Yes. I, I, I'm hearing discussion of the 6th or the 20th. It w isn't it going to be both? Don't we have a first reading and a second reading? Well, I think you're talking about right now is when will it be brought back for the, the first reading? Okay. Then we're dealing with the second one. This is the so there would be well, two. Yeah, we would be deferring, diverting the first reading of the ordinance um, since we're not going to. So have if the we full did October sixth, we would also be doing October twentieth for the. No, second we would have. We still have to meet our obligation to go to the county for for their review as well. Gotcha. So okay. The first reading is all that we have advertised at this point because we're still negotiating that process. So we're adding just <clears throat> adding an application to the process. So you're looking at October twentieth. And what I like to do is, you know, because you talked about something, and that's uh, we have quite a few individuals here uh, that's uh, affected, is to be able to have enough time to talk with everybody, uh, reassure everybody as to what's going to be placed in it as we bring it forward. Um, so are we looking at the 20th? Excuse me, I didn't mean to There's know. also November 3rd, too. I mean, yeah. I mean there's oh, November 3rd. Yeah, we, we I just mean, as long as you make a date, sir, I believe. November 3rd is also. Yes, yeah, I was just going to say that part of the discussion on whether or not to do October 20th or a date certain is basically solely for the advertising ex yes. expense, correct? So yes. if the applicant, if, if those dates aren't convenient for you, if you wanted to pay for the re-advertising, then we could just do not a date certain and we could say 
defer to a future meeting, et cetera. That's the main reason for trying to do a date certain. So I don't know what the advertising expenses are, but just to provide that. We did make a decision for November, November 6th. Yeah, November 3rd, 3rd. if November nope. 6th, if we're going to October. And furthermore, Mayor, if we could provide some uh, insight to the public and what exactly we're yeah, trying yeah, to discuss yeah, and move yeah. forward on doing since they take yeah. the time to came. We'll definitely do that. If we can get to this, this point. Right now, uh, just as, as we look at trying to find out, it's one of really trying to see if there's a restrictive covenant that the applicant would uh, agree to as far as the use of that land. And then uh, my thoughts is there's additional meetings during that time if there are some additional concerns as it relates to their, because one of the main things in my mind is this, in the staffing report it says the parking lot should make things safer, and I hear a lot of emails saying it's unsafe. And so those kind of count each other, and I think that that needs to be explained. One of the things that we did talk about the last time was if we went to the parking lot, it was going to be no parking on the street. That was going to be putting signs up that so that we didn't have it, we had a park a lot, and then we go back to having parking on the street. So those type of things hopefully be conveyed so that when we come back, there's a great understanding about what we have and what's going to take place. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, in terms of dates, uh, November 3rd is a date that we would ask you to consider. That's good. So if we can get a uh, motion right now as far as um, need a motion to continue, continue both at, these uh, public hearings until November 3rd, 2015. Move to continue ordinance 2015-16 application 15-47 and ordinance 2015-17 application 15-47 to November 3rd meeting. Second. Want to come to the, the mic and say that? Can I go ahead and respond to the question? Yes. Okay. As you're walking up, I think I understand the question. You're wanting to know whether or not that anything has been approved tonight or will be approved tonight, and the answer is no. What is happening is is that the commission is considering a motion to continue the hearings until November the 3rd, and on November 3rd, there will be a full um, opportunity and the same public hearing that you would get tonight to discuss any matters relevant to both of these applications for the mm -hmm. land use change, the zoning change, and discussion relative to any restrictive covenant uh, that is being proposed by the applicant. Right. It would seem to me that we're putting the cart before the horse. We haven't agreed yet that it's gonna go commercial property. My understanding is the current zoning allows for additional parking. It's done the last time they uh, did a lot, in 2007, I believe it was. Uh, they didn't change the zoning. We, we can't get into any further details about the issue right now. If mm -hmm. there's a motion on the floor to continue, I thought I would just answer your question that no decisions okay. are being made tonight right. okay. other than there's gonna be a public hearing on November 3rd. Right. Okay. Got a motion of second uh, roll call. Commissioner Sieber? Yes. Commissioner Banther? Yes. Commissioner Terrapani? Yes. Vice Mayor Larson? Yes. Mayor Archie? Yes. Thank you. That's for 13 and 14. Thank you. Next, we go to miscellaneous item, item number 12, appointment to Parks uh, Recreation Advisory Board. Let's see, that was. I think we have uh, four uh, applicants and uh, one uh, selection to replace Mr. Banks. I don't know which side wants to start. I'll 
I'll start. I don't mind starting up trouble here on the board. Um, I won't be in trouble. That's okay. Uh, I would uh, motion or want whichever you want to say uh, for Steve Klein. What was the I go? Steve Klein. Well, Steve Klein. Steve Klein. Steve Klein. Steve Klein. Do your <laughs> so I motion to appoint Steve Klein as a regular member of the Parks and Rec. Um, ed, 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 advisory Board. Second. Second. Uh, any public comments on this item? Comments from the Boy Scouts? <laughs> <laughs> Roll call. Mr. Sieber? Yes. Mr. Banther? Yes. Mr. Terrapani? Yes. Vice Mayor Larson? Yes. Mayor Archie? Yes. <laughs> that concludes our agenda. Uh, I'll go to the attorney to chief his business. <laughs> <laughs> no comments, Mayor. I have nothing tonight. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity to be here. Glad to have you. Thank you. <laughs> City manager? Uh, no, sir. Madam Clerk? Mr. Bather. I'd like to thank all all the Boy Scouts for for coming out tonight. Is this is this for like a a, a, a merit badge or one of your class steps? Merit badge, yes. Which troop? 85. 85. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, I, I'm, 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 I I remember that badge. One of the ones I got. Thank you. Vice Mayor. No comments. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Uh, Tarpani. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to uh, apologize to the board for my upcoming absence. Um, I will be, I believe, out of town in Iceland for one of the budget meetings. Uh, moving, I think it's the 21st, Mark. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So, my apologies. Mr. Sieber. No comments. Well, I'm going to take my time and see if I can see this clock back here. I've got my new glasses. So, I believe it's... Uh, 747, we will adjourn this meeting if the scouts don't have anything to say. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. I think they all were. Yeah. Yeah. It was eventful. Better late than never. Well, I'm glad to have you. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it. back next time. Go sit in Jay back. I'm just going to Jay back next time. Take care of yourself out there.